In the previous section, we have talked about multi-threading, programming a lot in C sharp, and you have seen the basic syntax. They are not so complicated, but what's getting complicated is that when we are using multi-threads to perform tasks, but performing these tasks require multi-threads to share some common resources. When we have these kind of scenarios, things will get complicated because sharing resources may run into conflicts. That's not only human nature, well, it looks like computers are just extension of our human brains. So they have the same problems. Let's take one of the examples that we had in one of the previous videos. So share in the kitchen for cooking the dinner. We have dad and mom split all the dishes in half. And dad cooks half of the dishes and mom cooks the other half. However, when both people are in the kitchen, most of the resources are shared, for example. The common space is shared. The cooking surface is shared. Some of the tools are shared, like carving boards, knives. The spices are shared. The cookware are shared. So if we don't actually arrange things properly, mom and dad may run into conflict. The whole cooking process may actually slow down because of the conflict. Let's take another more concrete example. Let's think about a bank. Right? So if this is a bank building, and we have two people sharing the same account. Let's call them Tom and Jerry. They have the same account. Let's say that in the account, there's $1,000. Tom comes to withdraw $800. And Jerry comes to withdraw $800 as well. They didn't communicate with each other. They just come separately to the bank without knowing each other coming to the bank. And they're both withdrawing the same amount of money, which is $800. And when they come, there's teller A and teller B trying to help Tom and Jerry separately. Now, if the bank didn't implement any procedures to synchronize the process, and if teller A and teller B are not communicating with each other, let's say Tom and Jerry came to the bank almost at the same time, and teller A and teller B trying to inquire the balance of the account at about the same time. Now, because when teller A look at the account, it's $1,000 left. And when teller B look at the account, there's also $1,000 left. Imagine that this is before computer time. Because of that, teller A sees $1,000 is enough, right? because Tom only asked for $800. Teller B also sees there's enough money, and he knows that Jerry wants only $800. So what's going to happen is teller A is going to give Tom $800, and teller B is going to give Jerry, $800. Now, who's suffering? The bank is suffering because the account is overdraft. At this moment, negative $600 in the account. So this is a classical example where two different threads are performing tasks that are based on shared resources. In this case, the shared resource is the bank account. So if there's no proper arrangement to synchronize the process that are performed in parallel, then there is going to be a problem. And this proper procedure that's required to help to solve this type of problems is called thread synchronization in computer programming. So this is a real life example. And now we can jump into Visual Studio and look at how this problem manifests in computer language. Let's go ahead and create a new project. Still a console application, click on next. And we're going to call this synchronization overview. Done at eight. And we have a blank application now. So what we are trying to do is to add one to a counter. And we're going to have a counter. I'm going to initialize to zero. So this is going to be shared between two different threads. And what is the task that the threads are trying to perform? It's going to increment the counter. So I'm going to create a function to represent the task. And I'm going to call it increment counter. When we increment, we're going to increment it for 100,000 times. Here, I'm going to say counter equals counter plus, not plus i, but just plus 1. All right, so easy and simple. So this is the task the threads are going to perform. So now let's go back to the top and we are going to declare two different threads. So thread one 
is going to perform the increment counter task. And we're going to have the same thing, which is thread two. It's also going to perform the same task. Now, if we let them perform the task one after another, which means that we're going to let the threads run synchronously, we're going to let thread one perform first. Okay, so let it perform first and then we block. So we use thread one that join to block it. So that thread two cannot start until thread one finishes. So here I'm going to say thread two start. And when thread two finishes, then what we're going to do, we're going to console and output the result. So the final result, I'm going to say the final counter value is counter and that's it so if we do it this way everything runs synchronously there's nothing special about this and the expected result is going to be 200,000 so let's run it and as you can see it says the final counter value is 200,000 however if we let the thread actually runs asynchronously so let me move this line down over here and then I'm gonna put these two close so we're going to have thread one and thread two start one after another. But as you know, the worker threads are not blocking, right? This worker thread is not blocking. So once we have these two lines going, the threads, they're going to work in parallel. And then here we're just blocking so that after both threads finish, we are going to output the result. And this time before I actually run it, what do you think is going to happen? Is it going to show 200,000 or is it going to show more than 200,000 or is it going to show less than 200,000? Let's run and see the result, right? This time you can see that we have less than 200,000. Okay? If I run it again, now the value is different, but it's still less than 200,000. So why does that happen? Nevertheless, we are executing this line 200,000 times. That's absolutely correct. Whether there's any conflicts, synchronization problems, this line will be executed 200,000 times. However, the result is less than 200,000. So what is happening here? Because these two threads are running at the same time. So this is very similar to this bank account. The teller A and teller B they are working at the same time and when they look at the account they see that there's a thousand dollar left they see the same value and they both think that there is enough money in the account same situation here let's say that this counter is sitting at one thousand and at this moment both thread one and thread two are looking at the counter value at about the same time then they're going to see that the counter value is one thousand so then thread one add value one to it, which make the counter 1001. Well, thread two, guess what? Also add one to it, which makes the counter also 1001. It's probably not so easy to understand. The key problem here is this assignment is not an atomic operation. There are two steps involved in this line of code. The first one is it's taking a temporary value from the counter, right? So it's reading the value of the counter. The second one is that it tries to increment one based on the value in the temp variable. Let me copy this code and let's go to the diagram. Let's use the diagram to help us understand what is actually happening now. So we have this in thread one and we have the same thing in thread two. Okay. Because thread one and thread two, they're running about the same time right, in parallel. So it's possible that both are executing this line, var temp equals to counter. So var temp equals to counter, they get 1000. The other thread also get 1000. But the thread scheduler at this moment prioritize this first thread. So counter now becomes 1001. And then it's the second thread turn. At this moment, the temp variable is still 1000. So now the counter equals 1000 plus one. So it is still 1001. That means although these two lines are executed twice, 
but the result is that the counter didn't increment by two. The counter variable still increment by one, but it doesn't actually happen all the time. Right? If it happened all the time, then the counter will probably just sitting at very low value, depending on how many times this particular situation happens. That determines the final result. So from this example, you can see that whenever two threads are sharing the same resource, the program may run into problems. And we call this type of problems race conditions and inconsistent behaviors. It's inconsistent because you have seen that every time when I run it, the final result is actually different. Although they're less than 200,000 almost all the time, but they're still different. And race conditions is due to the threads are interfering with each other because they're trying to use the same shared resource. So this is how it manifests in computer programming. Therefore, we need a technique to solve this type of problem. And the technique is called threads synchronization or simply synchronization. We are going to talk more about this technique in the rest of this section. And that's everything I want to show you in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.